Okay. So our today's experiment, we are going to uh, do interference, interference of sound waves. And uh, what is the objective of our today's experiment? We are going to investigate the interference of two sound waves. Also, another objective is determine the speed of the sound wave in an air at room temperature. So these are the two objectives. But uh, you maybe notice that our experiments, we have uh, 10 experiments and half of the experiments are from waves and the next half experiments, the rest experiments are also from waves, but it is light waves and the beginning of the five experiments we are doing uh, mechanical waves or uh, we called, I mean one among them is sound waves. We have a standing wave experiment. So basically in today's experiment we are going to talk about sound waves. So what's the difference between sound waves and light waves? Basically, yeah, all of you know that because uh, this is one of the very important portion of the theory and all of you learned. But once again, I'm going to just give a little idea about that. We know that sound wave is a mechanical wave. That means sound waves needs a medium to uh, transmit. That means the source make a disturbance in the medium and that will be transmitted. I mean, the disturbance make another disturbance with the other layer and it will be gone, right? And that means in a mechanical wave, we need a medium. That means sound wave need a medium to travel. That means here, the medium is air. But we know the optics means, yeah, it's a light waves. And actually, uh, they are electromagnetic waves. So we call it, they are transverse waves. And in a, and the, the, the waves are propagating through the medium and they vibrate, transverse vibrations. And what about the longitudinal wave? That means sound waves, we know that it's a longitudinal waves and it makes uh, vibrations parallel to the direction of propagation and I'm going to just give you some idea just to uh, uh, make you clear about that so I'm going to just use uh, this thing have a look yes uh, yeah longitudinal waves here we can see that there's a compression wave right here there is compression and elongation so this is the more compressed area so we call the peak and this is the uh, less compression here the pressure here is very less so this is a trough so basically uh, we can represent the longitudinal wave exactly like a wave form that means this is the peak of the wave this is another peak and we know that one peak to peak represents the wavelength have a look in this Yes, you can see that the compression here, right? And the wave is, wave is transmitted through the medium exactly the same way. And one more picture. Uh, yeah, this is about the mechanical wave. It has vibrations parallel to the direction of propagation. And this is a light wave, a transverse wave. And it has two. One is the electromagnetic waves, right? One is the electrical component another one is the magnetic component all these ideas you are very well you know those things very well right now uh, my plan to show you uh, our today's experimental plans to do wave interference right we know that when two or more sound waves occupies the same space they affect to one another the waves do both, the waves do not bounce off each, but they move through each other. The resulting wave depends on how the wave will line up, right? What does it mean? That means we know that in a medium, if two waves uh, coincide, I mean, if two waves combines, what will happen? The combined waves make a big disturbance in the medium and it make a new wave. In fact, we know that we learned the theory of interference. When we have two waves, if they have the same wavelength and same phase, if they move together and if they interfere at one medium, if they interfere at one point, they could make a big wave 
like this so we call the interfere constructively and if this is the case we know that if these two waves interfere what will happen that this two peak and this this peak and this valley will cancel each other so that we are getting a destructive interference and actually and actually i don't need to explain this in detail because this is already you learned in theory but maybe you maybe notice that what is the condition for constructive interference that means we know that if two waves are going to interfere at this point imagine if one wave is traveled from here and another wave is traveled from this point and so that you can look you can see that both of them travel and both of them have same phase and same path they travel so the path difference is zero then at this point they will interfere constructively that means this peak and this will peak will produce a big peak so we will get a constructive interference and we know that the path difference delta is zero and of course we learned the condition for the in constructive interference if the path difference is zero or one lambda or two lambda that means once the path difference is n lambda where n equal to 0 1 2 etc we will get a constructive interference and at the same time when the path difference that means imagine if one wave is traveling this point this and another wave is traveled from this point let's say so here the path difference is they will interfere this part will make this and this part will make this so that it will interfere destructively here the path difference is in this picture the path difference is lambda by 2 also you learned in the theory if the path difference 2 is n plus n 1 plus lambda one by 2 lambda by 2 where n is 0 1 2 etc 3 etc so what we will get if the path difference is half lambda or 3 by 2 lambda or 5 by 2 lambda we may, we will get destructive interference these are the basic facts of i mean interference and we learned these in very detail in theory class so i just just to remind you all this fact now i'm going to show you what we are going to do in our experiment so let us have a look on our experiment have a look okay this is a setup we have to do our uh, interference of sound okay i will explain you in details what the setup right now is here this is the uh, frequency generator uh, here i have set a frequency of so this is the frequency uh, 2559 hertz that means 2.559 kilohertz and this is the frequency i'm going to uh, actually i just uh, uh, mute the sound because the tone make you you know uh, trouble so i just uh, mute it now look at this this frequency is sound is fed to the uh, tube and this tube uh, yeah the sound reach at this t junction what happens the sound has two uh, ways to travel because at this t junction uh, the sound split into two paths so uh, look at the construction of this tube this tube now you can see that there is an equal distance on the left side and the right side and they join together at this t junction and the sound now travel through these two junctions these two tubes and reach at this junction and at this junction it will produce a constructive interference since the path difference is zero because the two length of the two either side of the length of the two be same so they constructively interfere and we are getting a uh, constructive sound and actually we will get a good sound i mean which will be equal to the sound of the speaker uh, produced and it is actually this sound is now we are going to feed to a uh, mic and this mic will reproduce so this sound uh, I mean this mic will convert this sound into a voltage signal and that voltage uh, will be uh, getting through a voltmeter so this time we are going to get a maximum sound since the path difference is zero so it will be a constructive interference right now look at the voltage that we have it is around 4.3 voltage look into this voltmeter this is uh, 4.3 voltage i mean the maximum voltage we are getting right 
and why, why why we have this maximum voltage because it is a constructive interference since the path difference is zero the tube has an equal distance on either side right and the voltage right now i have is 4.3 voltage and this is the maximum actually this uh, sound wave that is the interfered sound wave we are going to reproduce by uh, this way because we wanted to plot the wave so there its amplitude actually depends on this this voltage if this voltage is 4.3 and that will be the maximum voltage now look at this tube here uh, you can see that uh, this tube is an adjustable tube if i increase the length of this tube what will happen the sound will have two path differences i mean the first part of the sound will pass through this and the other part will be passed through this side the other side what it will do there is a path difference right so if there is a path difference there is a interference and it could be a constructive or destructive but now look here uh, so what i did i bring it back uh, to a path difference which is equal to zero that means the two side of the tube have same length now i can change the length of these tubes what i did i just increase the length of this side by 1 cm in fact 1 cm uh, make another wave the interfered waves in uh, amplitude is less than the previous one actually the previous one it was a constructive interference now it is not interfere constructively and what did i do now i change this into another 2 cm in fact here it is 2 cm the other side it is 2 cm so total there is a 4 cm path difference and now the voltage is that means the sound is less so there is a close to destructive interference and if i further move the tube you can see that the voltage is changing and at one point the voltage is going to be a very close to zero at another point it is increasing and increasing and in fact we are seeing the interference uh, we are actually observing the interfered sound wave and this is the way we will be going to plot the interference sound wave right now we have the voltage for different path differences and actually our plan look at this now at this point you look at this when i moved this around 6 or 6.5 cm you can see around uh, 4.3 voltage that means it is exactly equal to a constructive interference and we know that if there is if the path difference is zero or n lambda we will get a constructive interference now this is a constructive interference and further i moved what happens the amplitude of the sound is decreasing and it is close to zero now look at this that means at this point we have a destructive interference and if i move further what will happen at this point you see it is a destructive interference if i move further what will happen the voltage will change and it is going to increase at at one point again it will be going to 4.3 now again i'm going to get a constructive interference then again when i move it will be decreasing and you see now what happens it again i am getting a constructive interference so these two this this is the path difference when i am getting a constructive interference actually once if i provide you a data of uh these displacement i mean this path difference and the voltage you can easily plot right because uh, for e the amplitude of uh, this interfered sound wave at, at each point you have then if you plot all the points if you join all the points it will be definitely look like a curve wave right and if i how the wave and actually we know the displacement the path difference and when from that wave you will be able to read the uh uh superposed or interfered sound wave look this is a setup once again this is a sound generator or frequency generator and the frequency that we used is 2559 hertz and that is the frequency we fed to the speaker and the speaker produced that sound uh, then it passes through the tube and at that t junction it split into two paths then at that t junction joined and the Uh, they joined at this junction and uh, now this sound is transferred to the mic 
the mic converted is an electrical signal and that is the voltage and this voltage represents the amplitude of the sound wave and right now uh, we have the data of these uh, uh, i mean i have taken the data i have taken uh, the displacement and time sorry the displacement uh, and the voltage at different points and the plot is here you can see that this is a wave from the two troughs you can see that it is around uh, uh, 26 centimeter is for two waves so for the one wave the wavelength is 0 0.13 meter from the wavelength uh, we can easily calculate the freq uh, velocity of the sound wave v equal to f lambda so the frequency is 2559 and the wavelength is 0 0.13 meter so we have three 332.67 hertz so this is the way you will be going to do the experiment will be providing you uh, maybe another set of data then you need to do the calculation or we will do the experiment